Welcome to the early morning ascension show. It's actually really late. <laughs> We've been um, so busy and so um, very grateful. Our communities of light are growing. And so we were very happy to have our communities of light session last night. And we did a beautiful full moon ceremony. So those of you who so desire, we are continuing in the full moon energies two days before us and two days after. And so um, the full moon energies are really, really a great time to create ceremony and sacred connection with who you are, the sacred trinity of um, all that you exist within, the earth connection that you've come here as a contract within your soul to open up experiences with the earth, how you are threaded with her on all lifetimes, and why we always have, each and every one of us, have um, codes within our soul's blueprint to activate those earthly experiences and explorations and how we want to kind of thread ourselves um, within Gaia and really explore Gaia in greater experiences. Um, and so each and every one of us have those codes and, um, and experiences that are in our, our vibrational synchronistic unfolding, whether they're through dreams when you're awakening, um, looking after your, um, your ascension cycle, how you're um, becoming really intimate and, and joyfully monitoring if you are, um, where you're at in your growth and your evolution and how that kind of affects you in your everyday unfolding. Because it does, absolutely, it changes who you are, the chemistry and the biochemistry of all that you are, the cells that operate. If you are affirming and living in co-creative awareness, um, that heart-centered consciousness, <laughs> Um, letting yourself off of those repetitive um, vibrational cycles and patterns that keep us steeped in these vibrational stories that do not serve us in any way, <clears throat> besides for continually running programs that um, are, you know, um, constantly showing us again and again and again about the lack of self that those systems kind of thrive in, um, because they're running on um, belief systems that are not within the oneness of self, the oneness of the soul that is spirit. And so we're really happy to have spirit with us today. <clears throat> and I guess the throat is clearing for the chakra systems. We wanted to offer with this divine moon and the energies with this divine full moon is the energy to positively um, take action, positively invest in who you are, positively strike forward in however you choose to design yourself as, and I'm looking at sacred geometry right now. So it's really important to use your mastery and your creative gifts and skills to truly start building um, that spirit matter, um, that spirit matter um, of all that you are through your intention, through your love and through your, um, your, your blessed fluidity of who you are as spirit and start creating that fluidity of spirit into that matter matter by visualizing and projecting and intending your own unique experience for your body for your expressions of who you are and how you co-create with Gaia. And again, it's really important that um, <clears throat> these are such important experiences and lessons because I've been through everything. Um, you know, all the cycles that I've been in to assist humanity in understanding, um, you know, I'm a professional, <laughs> professional um, navigator, if you will, and prof <laughs> professor on the psyche and the psyche wounds and all of the densities that I've traveled within and how it affects the bodies, the multidimensional bodies, the cells, the mental programs that we run within and how the, the psyche is damaged um, and how the understanding of control inhibits and restricts and creates so much damage on the multidimensional bodies and systems and why it's really important to take that time in the morning to get intimate with who you are as a multidimensional being, your spirit first, um, creating matter. So important to operate in this every day. That, that brings all of your self-knowing back to self, releasing any outside importance or value or story or direction, anything outside of you, but returning all of your sovereign power back to self, all of your sovereign knowing and start redesigning your life in new ways. Um, <clears throat> because all of our outer programs, all of the outer programs are based on the systems of control and fear and limitation, the oligarchy systems that, you know, um, have, we've all created those systems, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no us and them and white and black and all of those experiences that separate us. We're all that series of one that we're all interpreting our own vibrational stories of where we sit within it. And we get to each re redesign it and we re revamp it and rewrite it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Lots of clarity in the throat today because of the full moon. And so we've created 
um, these beautiful journal pages and um, we have them on our um, Twitter page and um, our Facebook page. And it's meant to be seen, you know, kind of as a journal. This is your, your opening page and it reminds you about the multidimensional bodies. And that's that first time when you wake up in the morning, the first um, experience is to, you know, just take your deep breath and just harmonize within your multidimensional bodies, calling your soul and your higher self forward, and just intending a positive rewrite and a reconstruction of who you are and to greater harmonize with peace and love is who you are, returning all your energy and all your light and all of your, <clears throat> your direction and your discernment within you. You are directing the health of your body. You are directing the amplification of love within your body. And through that, then offering yourself the insights, the reflections, and the wisdoms, and the mastery through which your dreams are showing you, and the interpretations, and then the experiences of how your dreams take you on these beautiful journeys in the cosmos, and what they're really showing you. And then allow your spirit, and your higher self, and your soul to come forward and say, what was that dream showing me? What, it, what fear do I need to work on, and what do I need to integrate? Your dreams will always offer you those um, implications and interactions for you to course correct. Um, they're always showing you how to revise and revisit who you are to release any limiting beliefs or any projections that you might be taking on. And for those of us that are empaths and all of the, all of the beautiful crystal children, um, <clears throat> really to take time, you know, within their daily schedule to take that time to decompress and move through some sort of a journaling process and however they do it, whether it's, you know, doing a voice recorder or, you know, writing out their expressions and their experiences throughout the day so that they're having that fluid movement of emotional because their emotional body is how we, we manifest. And so how you feel and how you vibrate and the resonance that you vibrate at is really, really important to how you're co-creating and mastering your life. Um, and we have affirmations and then the various questions and you can get to ans um, ask yourself and we've written them in our books. We've written three books on ascension and three books on the pathwork and walking the spirit and how that really amplifies and um, allows you to navigate the various energies of life as people are renewing themselves um, in a deeper way of understanding who they are. If we have an infinite number of beings on our planet that are all awakening at the same time, anywhere you sit within this vibrational bandwidth of Earth, there's, there's anywhere vibrations from three to the seventh dimensional bandwidth that people can be walking within. <clears throat> When you're in straight alignment and all of your chakras are aligned and you're living in your highest and your best, you can be operating in moments throughout your day as a seventh dimensional being. You're calling in that information that's being downloaded and you're allowing that perfect harmony of the higher self and all the multidimensional bodies and living as your highest light. And then you would be harmonizing in the various frequencies through which you walk and vibrate throughout the day. How our, our role is to constantly harmonize in greater and greater light so that we're oscillizing in that highest perspective of light. And through that, it's up to us to determine how our environments are serving us, the circles that we're serving within, how to maintain that inner balance of sacred light so that your inner pillar of light is your highest source of light and not to be thwarted, not to be gamed, if you will, of any outside stories or any, any other experiences that want to um, you know, kind of play and entangle with you um, to kind of pull on those energy strings, but really to be understanding and aware of how your bodies of energy work and how you can direct and navigate yourself through any life experience because you will be challenged because that's mastery. Um, and one thing that I've been, um, you know, understanding the last few years is not only understanding the psyche itself and how it operates within the soul's experience as you're moving through um, your everyday moment for moment life, depending on where you're at in your ascension cycle, if you're going through a release, usually around full moons, you're allowing that navigational pull um, and that magnetic pull from the moon to call forward any of those darker and denser energies. And that's why usually at full moons, a lot of experiences on our planet happen because we're so intrinsically connected with our moon and our planets and our celestial cycles. And why each and every one of us that have been born with, you know, <laughs> soul blueprints that we've chosen to take on, you know, your birth charts and all of those things help you operate within just the energies that you were born under and how you can use them and enhance them um, with many other things that the multiverse can offer you as a matter energy and magnetic being. Um, and always remember, we say this all the time, but there's still those that, you know, continue to, um, you know, want to <laughs> play in the games of, of um, wanting to manipulate and control, um, you know, people's energy fields um, within our collective. And it's important to, to talk about um, and know how to navigate different types of energies 
so that you're not being pulled into stories that are not comfortable, but to truly stand in your light and stand firm and not allow any of your inner story to get um, thwarted and bothered by anything outside of you through the private agendas that, you know, have their own, um, their own divine need or want of you, <laughs> um, which is really has nothing to do with um, the right use of free will. And so just allowing those experiences in your knowledge and when you're aware of them, just to reaffirm and restate who you are and what you're standing within, state your needs and your, um, your desires to not entangle and to disengage and close the door vibrationally, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally on any of those experiences that you are sensing. What you are sensing and what you experience are vibrationally the same. <laughs> Those of us that are empaths and those of us that are psychic and those of us that have been in energy work for eons and coming back again and again to do energy work for the multiverse, um, what we sense and what we feel is, is a truth for us. And so we feel everything vibrationally and why um, much of what I've experienced over the past couple of years was so very damaging um, and I can feel and sense it all. And so now I'm becoming more of a master to honor and hone my vibrational fields and to work very closely with very special beings to ensure that I'm constantly raising my vibration to constantly emanate um, a stronger and more um, strengthened vibration, <laughs> you know, so that those energies that are, you know, choosing to play those games of um, thwarting, you know, free will timelines and free will, um, you know, intentions, <laughs> um, they're you know they're not going to have the effect um because i'm standing in my full truth and my full consciousness and so just know that it does happen and does occur and it, it occurs at various levels of the creational reality um in different ways the vibrational experiences that do occur whether it's bullying in the playground or um at work <laughs> abuse of power at work um using power and control in various ways through the banking systems and through things like that all of those things in, in our socioeconomic systems are all coming up for review. And in that coming up for review, we get to rewrite it. And we get to, we get to clearly state and, and place everything on the table and say, these are the things that have been occurring. These are the things that are not in accordance to the right use of will so that all peoples are respected and honored. And these are the things that will no longer be tolerated, you know, as the councils of light came in a couple of weeks ago. Um, because the innocent cannot continue to be um, damaged in those ways. And so it's got to be, it's got to be cleared and cleansed out of the story vibrationals, um, the vibrational stories and the karmic stories and the lineage stories and the Akashic stories that we all come with, transmuting those energies and continuing to set the pace for your future direction of who you are vibrationally, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Each and every one of us without fail is allowing ourselves to um, understand energy, to open up to energy, to know that everybody's doing the best that they can. And oftentimes they get um, called within these experiences to to play with various types of energy in the ways that they choose to play with energy. Everything in our universe is energy. There are absolutely councils of creation that are in charge of ensuring the balance of all creational life. There are councils and consciousness beings and collectives responsible for this. Each and every one of us as aspects of spirit, as individual molecules of spirit, if you will, we are responsible for keeping our epicenter in balance. And there's enough wisdom and knowledge on the planet right now that people understand how to keep balanced by understanding the multidimensional bodies, the male and the female energy bodies, how we allow ourselves to process um, emotions and not allow ourselves to get triggered and then become angry and upset because those emotions are not being processed, those traumas are not being healed. And so really becoming awake and aware of our micro macro responsibility to maintain our light to maintain the balancing of our multidimensional bodies mentally, physically, emotionally, and energetically, so that we're not walking around in dis-ease and illness. It's all very um, allowable and, and honoring of us to return the light and the responsibility of who we are back to ourselves and really begin that inner love and that inner direction and inner self-empowerment because true self-empowerment and true confidence can only come from within when you're owning yourself fully and completely knowing the story that you walk within knowing the power that you walk within knowing the honor that you walk within and regardless of whatever thing anything in your outer environment is going you're the one creating that new 5d environment and then all of those other stories just fall away because at some point those you know you're navigating in a different manner and you're calling in those different vibrations and that means creating enough 
of the quantum jump, you're creating enough of those positive experiences that all of the energies that are not a part of that will absolutely get the get the vibrational hint, if you will, that they that there's nothing that can be done to harm or affect the vibrational energy that you're carrying because it's no longer part of the story you're carrying. And then they'll shift off because it's all about vibrations, the molecules that want to play with those like molecules. And they'll be vibrating and trying to find in the same experiences, which is what is happening with our socioeconomic programs. The things that are breaking, everything's kind of falling apart. And when the dust settles, it's like, okay, now what do we put back together? And how do we put it back together? What can we align to? And what we're aligning to is the fifth dimensional experience and co-creations. That our bodies are the physical experience of what our spirit is. And if our spirit is not being fed and our spirit is not being nourished, physically, mentally, emotionally, and energetically, are we connecting with the heavens and our light and our breath? And if we're not nourishing ourselves as spirit within, as we talked about so many times and returning all power back to us, all sovereignty and all choice, then it then becomes diseased and fractured and warped and imbalanced, where the emotional body is so overwhelmed because there's just not enough clearing and understanding going on about the wounds, the inner wounds. And then of course it complicates when there are those that play the games of energy um, you know, energy, you know, whatever they do with energy that's not in the benevolence of the highest and the best, <laughs> you know, thwarting somebody else's path by spell work and things like that um, is not using the right word, use of will. And so it's really, really key to understand because it does affect people. It does affect people, <laughs> you know, and to understand that the energy that you're putting out, your intentions and your direction of your energy affects people it affects the world it affects the how people pick up on sounds and it affects animals and it affects life it affects everything so this is what we're waking up to and so what we wanted to talk about is when you're creating that beautiful self-direction of who you are every day every day you're creating that beautiful self-direction to quantum jump into that version of you and we've been using this in our um, our private coaching sessions is that um, when you're when you're experiencing on this this earth experience now because you're you have an infinite number of potential earths that you're co-creating timelines for so if you're unaware of the vibration you're keeping and you're not nourishing that pillar of light that holds your spirit you're not nourishing your physical your mental emotion by that self-love and that self-honor that self-clarity heeding the call of spirit and spirit says do this and spirit says do that you're heeding the call of spirit, you're listening to spirit, you're honoring spirit, you're nourishing spirit, you're valuing spirit, you're not allowing others to mistreat you and misdirect you and pull you into stories that are not yours. All of those energies are about the nourishment of spirit. And why? When you're not following your path and when you're not following your story, that's when you get thrown off and you get put into those aspects of a 3D earth, if you will. And you're just reliving those karmic stories that just go around and around and around and around. And they're hard to get into this new cycle of new through which you create another earth timeline. The potentials are there because you keep sending those positive intentions. I wish my life was like that. I, I can think about that. I would like that. I would like that. So those positive intentions are in the spirit realm, but you have to practice it in a multidimensional way so that it becomes a part of a more physical matter, if you will, not just spiritual matter. So this is why using that daily self-care and really aligning physically, mentally, emotionally, and etherically who you really are and what you choose for yourself, what stories are you running, what stories can you let go of, and how can you start operating in the unconditional version of that multidimensional version of who you are and really create that sovereignty of, yes, this is who I am, this is who I am, this is who I am. Really start affirming the chakras, really start affirming the light, really start embodying the light of who you are. And then you start creating that imagined, visualized and affirmed experience of you on this particular earth. Now, when we talk about visualizing and co-creating, A, we do it after that we've done the clearing of the emotional body because you don't wanna be creating that earth from the point of where you're being triggered and ticked off. And we all have those moments because we're all going through tremendous clearing right now um, through the imbalances of the rebalancing of male and female, the rebalancing of all of the energies that have been stuck within our grids and within our collective for so long. So all of us are responsible for clearing those negative energies when we feel them throughout the day. So just realign to center through breath, realign to center through love and affirmations, and just clear the negative energies and just reaffirm the light that is bathing in your field, reaffirm um, you know, any, if you're, a, if you're um, an empath or a psychic or an intuitive, um, an intuitive medical, if you are working in any, in any energetic realm, you want to make sure that you're doing your, um, you're bathing yourself in light throughout the day and you're placing yourself in, you know, light bubbles, if you will, 
um, if you're going through those um, really challenging times and navigating um, difficult groups um, that you know, you know, you can sense things that are going on, um, you know, and you've, you've, you're climatizing yourself to a higher vibration while you're leaving vibrational stories behind that are not valuing you and respecting you, you can still feel those energetic projections when there's those that are mad or angry at you, you can still feel them in your field. So it's good to place yourself in those bubbles of love and protection. And again, don't take on their stories of dissatisfaction because you living in your light is not their, it's not your story to solve for them. That's up to them to go within and say, okay, well, why am I feeling this? Because they're moving in their light and they're being happy in their light. Why does that upset me? Because then that takes responsibility to go within and start accounting for the life, start accounting for the choices, start accounting for the vibration that each holds. And that's the only way that that's, that occurs. Again, why knowing thyself is one of the most profound mastery statements. Because without knowing thyself, you can't create thy story. You can see the, you can see the karmic cycles that we've all been on because we're all working through those stories. And there's not one person on this planet is not working through their stories of vibrational socioeconomic and socio lineage and socio dogmatic experiences that we've all come from. So it's our, it's our intention not to just stay in the one cycle of the continued pattern of limitation. You have guides that are constantly leading you to higher and higher potentials. You've constantly got these infinity potentials and the codes within the omnipresent that are constantly trying to feed you. You can do this. What about this? What about this? And then it's up to us to say, no, I'm going to break that story off of this limitation or this fear or this control. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want that earth anymore. I want this earth where I'm contributing. I want to be a part of this participation. I want to have impact. And let that old version of you go. And when we say old version of you, it's meant in a multidimensional way. And so how you vision and, and view yourself in this now moment has nothing impacting of this moment right here, because every now moment you're creating a new version of you, if you so choose to be in alignment with that profundity of spirit. Again, as you're working with spirit as spirit, the harmonization of all that you are as spirit, there's nothing that this body cannot be healed in. If you're carrying a disease or illness, your now moment creates this future timeline of earth in the highest prevent, you know, potential way. And so they're showing me um, the, the timeline that you create is absolutely, and, and why, you know, we're just bringing everybody back to understanding these, these really highly impactful, they're usually mental patterned programs that are so hard to break because it's a constant mental loop that people find themselves on. And then they get that frustration. Well, why can't this do this? Why can't I stop thinking about this? Because the spirit is not being nourished in a creative way. And it just, it's just staying on that, that, like a skipping record that just keeps skipping because that's the vibrational mind. The mind cannot get you through ascension. It has to be done through that inner work with spirit and with love and by creating those new patterns of a multidimensional way so that you're patterning yourself in new higher vibrational ways, not just mental thought. Mental thought cannot get you there. It must be through the multidimensional almost of spirit. And that is the surrendering of all that you are an ego to your soul and your, your higher self. And so that's how you really create that profound allness in creating those new timelines and healing those wounds, those deep, those deep wounds that, that hit every part of your multidimensional body. And because you run a sacred trinity, it affects everybody that you're involved with in your soul family, and it affects the earth. So it's really important that we, we begin to take really ex great excitement and sovereignty in who we are and how we each have potential to create healthy cells, healthy bodies, healthy mind, healthy balance, healthy wellness, and really stand within our power when we do find those moments of aggravation of others not respecting our power and our stories. And it's okay because you can never, you can never control what others, how others behave and how others react, but you can absolutely stand within your power, disengage and move forward and not even look back. Because if there's not that respect for you and you experiencing yourself and expressing yourself and exploring yourself fully and completely as you, then you're going to find those beings that are absolutely in alignment. And your path requires that you be nourished in kind. And so why would you want to stay in a circle of those that are not nourishing you and valuing you? And absolutely, you know, and in some cases, as I've experienced, depleting you on every vibrational level. And so it's a, it really, you know, it really takes that inner self and that inner knowing. And when you sense and know something's wrong and you know and sense when your body feels off and you know and sense when it continues to happen again and again, that there's other forces there that are playing games and you need to step out of it and disengage.
And so that keeps you in your power of self and the heavens will equal you, equally match you in protection and love and care for you in that because you've taken yourself out of these vibrational karmic games and toys and, and playing of, you know, people wanting to play with your energy field and your timelines and so forth. And that doesn't happen to everyone, mind you. But um, there's the energetic games that are continuing. And so when that is, just understanding and not, not to let it, you know, throw you off your path or off your course and just understand that you're going to have to care for your bodies and your fields in different ways when you do feel those deep releases that are going on at a collective level, especially with the, the you know, the, the, the various experiences that we're all moving through, masks and no masks, and all of these things that we're moving through. And just allow yourself to align to a higher vibrational story. What story and what earth do you want to see yourself on? An earth where we're not so focused and investing so much time on illnesses and disease. Because if we're aligned with spirit and we're aligning in spirit, we're feeding spirit, we're nourishing spirit, then we won't have the vibrational intention to even catch a disease. So the vibrational energies are always allowing us to create greater light. And that greater light would never even create the disease and the vibrational levels that are diseases. And so it's just a matter of understanding consciousness, understanding your body. And of course, there's so many studies now about higher consciousness and how it affects, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dispenza you know, he's written some great books on the, the application of consciousness and the effects of, you know, um, stress and fear, um, and how it affects the bodies and the, the programming. And so it's really important to know that the consciousness is everything to multidimensional health and wellness. Consciousness is everything to how you manifest a new world. Consciousness is everything to how you manifest your oneness with spirit and all the gifts and skills that you come with your soul and how to create the new now so powerfully that when you're in harmonization with all of your now, you get to, you get to create that timeline and that quantum jump through which in the next morning your reality is different. Your reality is different. You just continue that vortex momentum. Because we've talked about, well, when you're going through these, these um, ascension cycles and these releases, and you've come into that alignment, well, how can I change? How can I shift? How can I see it from this perspective? And you're allowing yourself to feel more multidimensionally. If this is the issue right now, how can I release it and let go of it? And how can I create something new so that I'm always reaching up and out for those new vibrations to come in and create a new vortex momentum? Then you're absolutely creating this new, more physicalized New Earth timeline. Because remember, it's always spiritual matter until you continue to physicalize it by your physical action. And so, again, it's connecting with Light Tribe. And that's what they were showing me today on our channel today is how to create those more physicalized timelines where you absolutely see that moment for moment your reality is changing. That's by empowering and inspiring yourself first because self-love and self-empowerment and self-honor, knowing that you have remarkable gifts, knowing that your story is beautiful, knowing that you're meant to shine without apology, regardless of what anybody else is going through, without apology, be bold, be beautiful, and shine your unique shine and express your unique self. You have the right to be exactly who you are. You have the right to shine and be beautiful in who you are. You have the right to express who you are and what you know to be true. And the beautiful wisdoms that so many people on earth that will be awakening to, the beautiful channelers and the beautiful experiential beings that are coming forward with the great visions from other planets and other galaxies. And we're always, um, you know, I don't know, gosh, since 1980, 89, we've been coming more into more um, greater awareness of um, our celestial families and oneness and preparing for first protocol contact and first contact. Um, each and every one of us are preparing ourselves for those experiences. And we don't have to ever, you know, create stories of having to validate and verify who we are, but just sound, you know, stand firmly in who we are, you know, and we're not asking for anybody to, you know, to, to, you know, to, um, you know, to believe in us or want to take on our path, but to simply we have the human right to express who we are with joy and with value and with honor. <laughs> and why would we ever want to stay in systems that deplete us and demean us and belittle us? We're meant to evolve and to expand. And, and so we should. Every, every being on this planet has that right to begin that sovereign path of self-seeking and that sovereign path of self-love. And we're meant to live fully in who we are. And when you're sensing something, stand in your spirit and heed that spirit and stand up for yourself. Because that's your spirit saying, do you have my back? And spirit's been showing you through dreams and through synchronicities and through the synchronicities that you're seeing every day and you're seeing the red flags. So really pay attention to that because that's your teams and your spirit in the, the non-physical that's showing you. And if we're not guided by our intuition, then we're guided by some other stories that aren't serving us at all. And that's what we've been doing for eons. So really pay attention to the spirit within and how you're being guided. And we all know that being guided by your intuition is the highest and the best experience for your path of ascension. 
Um, and then you get to move through those portals. You get to move through those beautiful portals that you're creating because you're intending through every experience of who you are and understand that you are a soul ascension. You are not only the physical being in your body, but you are a spirit. That spirit is a part of the beautiful particles of all of your timelines that are being sent to you through the myriad of portals, um, ascension codes, the, the upper, the lower, the inner, the out. Um, and all of your teams that are assisting you and constantly upgrading your bodies, upgrading your timelines, upgrading your stories. But it's up to you to take that sovereignty and say, yes, today I'm going to create this for myself. I really want to look into this. I really want to look into that and start creating those creative behaviors. And we say patterns lightly because we don't want it to ever feel like the old, you know, karmic patterns that have been so very damaging and very challenging to step off of, but they're absolutely doable. So, so don't ever feel it, regardless of whatever you feel you're going through. Um, and, and trust me, I've been through it all. Whatever you feel you're going through, you're absolutely able to transcend it. You know, whether it's an eating disorder, whether it's an addiction, whether it's dysfunction or abuse, it's absolutely in your power, in your power, and you will have all of the heavens that will harmonize you with your purity of intent to know that you're worthy of a greater path and a greater earth experience and a greater body of light and love and wellness and balance. Um, and we've got so many tools and so many constructs that we've created through all of my experiences and the many timelines and dimensions. And I'm really here to, to bring it forward and really um, in my joyful way and to add the best um, um, in many of my global webinars, um, how you can do that and, and absolutely know that you have a tribe and your communities of light are waiting to connect with you. And this was the, um, the, 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 the gif or the gift that I had um, my illustrator makeup years ago. And there was the three universes that we, uh, we've often talked about. And it's like a toroidal experience, just like each and every one of us were toroidal, the epicenter that we often talk about, the magnetic fields, the causal, physical, mental, and emotional, and all of your cosmic energies and how your aura and whatever you're going through can experience tears and rips in the aura and how to heal those and how to bring them back to their fluency of light. And so too is the universe in and of itself when we're um, operating in understanding and wellness and oneness with the universal laws, the law of one, well, the right use of will, the law of balance, and all of those experiential laws, they're operating. Of course, those laws are there <laughs> within our universe because it is the delicate balance that we each hold and how as each and every one of us operate as this beautiful, delicate, and elegant epicenter that we're meant to take in great honor. And we talked about the other day about the seed. That seed of energy is that really seed of preciousness that we are each meant to seek within and find our own unique gifts and our own unique vibration of resonance. We're meant to shine our most brightest and give value and honor in that. Not feel bad for being as bright and beautiful as you are, not for feeling unappreciated or unvalued, but truly start to feed yourself with that value and appreciation because you will call in those that will equally value you and, and release yourself from those energies that don't um, because you're allowing yourself to vibrate in that higher vibrational way and never succumb to a, a vibrational pattern or story or company that continues to, to put you down and belittle you. And understand that everybody is going through their experiences and it doesn't give them, it doesn't give them permission to continue to treat um, others in that way, but it absolutely allows you to set your own pace and your own vibrational playing field by disengaging and saying that's not, that's not valid anymore for my um, alignment. And you get to make that choice to say what's okay and what's not okay. Um, you want to be treated with honor and respect because you are that sacred seed. And as you do, you're reclaiming your energy, you're reclaiming your power, and you're reclaiming your light. Not to engage with those vibrational fields and energies that do not respect and honor you as you're respecting and honor yourself. And as Jesus said to me many years ago, you know, you're meant to wear the best raiments. You know, and so work with those energies of you are meant to be held in the most high. God holds you in the most high. Spirit holds you in the most high. Your higher self does. Your soul does. But do you? Do you see that vision of you and that version of you really holding that stake of energy vibration? Can you feel yourself loving yourself so much that you're worthy of really great clothes? You don't have to feel like you're not worthy of great clothes or to give yourself a treat and buy something nice for yourself when you haven't bought yourself anything nice or to get yourself a nice healthy meal. Where are the values of your nourishment of self? And then again, really tune in and hone into the vibrational stories that you are playing within and those that are co-creating with you. And are there those games going back and forth of the belittling and not, not requiring that value to be there? You're meant to take great care of yourself. You're meant to take great honor in yourself. You're meant to feel really good about yourself. And you're meant to express 
explore and experience yourself in the most highest vibrational ways because that's the vibrational standard that's the vibrational example we're meant to fit into this new 5d experience where we're being in joy of spirit i'm in joy of who i am i'm in joy of my body and my health and my wellness i've worked really hard to get where i am i've worked really hard vibrational release those vibrational stories for not only me but my whole collective and for divine feminine i want to be a great leader of divine feminine collective i want to be a co-creator of divine feminine and show all divine feminine from here on out that absolutely regardless of the stories that you've been told you are absolutely as equal as the highest creators on this planet and in the galaxy and of course we are. Why would we be told any less? <laughs> Why would we want to believe we are any less? So really release those stories. So many of us have taken on those projections because of, of the energies that um, we've played within and the stories that we've co-contracted with. We have absolutely every will within our power to say no more, to release all of those co-created co stories that are not valuing and honoring us at every time we step up and we level up. And to know that you can send those energies back and have them deal with those energies that they've co-created for themselves and just a step out and disengage. Um, and it's not always a fun experience and not every experience is like that because there will be times where people want to step up and work with you and, and level up too, right? And everybody is at a unique pacing. Everyone is at a unique temperament and everyone has their own unique experiences that they must move through. No one can do it for you. The energy that you've called in from karma, the energy you've taken on from your collective, the energy you've taken on from your soul family, it's up to you to clear. And that's why you have it coded so that when you call those things in, why am I feeling this way? And really sit and be with those energies, be with the wounds. So that's the only way you find out, well, why did I need that? Why did I say that? Why did I do that? Then you have to inner reflect and then choose that new because then you know you're a master by working through that and alchemizing it. No one can do that for you. And certainly cannot be blamed on anyone because your reality is your choice. And it's up for each person to own that and claim it. In that claiming, you gain that light. That's what spirit wants of you. And that's why spirit said, and Jesus said, do you're not worthy? Are you not worthy of the best raiments? You gotta claim it. You gotta own that. And when you do own that, alchemically, right? You're saying that story is just not who I am anymore. No way. Like, no way. I've done that. I've done the work. I've been there. It doesn't feel good at all. I'm over here. This is where I am. And be proud of it. You don't have to make excuses for your story just because others aren't, aren't okay with it. So let them be okay. That's fine. They'll find their story. Why would you be held back because others aren't happy for you being where you are? So just let them, they'll have to work through it and they'll have to raise their vibration if they so choose. And if not, that's okay too. And you can feel the same level of oneness, but absolutely do not allow yourself to compromise your light or your body or your health or your wellness. And those are the things that every person, there's not one client and being that I've talked to in all of my years of service that has not gone through that. Because that's stepping up into a new level of becoming. And there has to be those discomfort moments because all the crowds that you're working with in the circles and the families, all of those experiences are still working on the same cycles of belief. That's okay. But until you discuss it and you say, let's experience something new and you're continually working and continually working, then you have those opportunities to create new. It's up to each person to say, where do I fit within this? And then it's up to them to go within and ask them own, themselves, who am I? And create their own unique path, not follow anybody else's. It's up to each person to create their own earth, their own earth, their own stories, their own soul's records, and not play with anybody else's through control, through fear, or through any other tactic, because it will absolutely come back and continue the same karmic cycles. Because spirit will continue until those lessons are learned. The higher self and the teams that are worked with, if, until they are following the right use of will and understanding that every action, every experience will come back until you, the lessons are learned. Why would I do that? Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to inhibit anybody on their path? And then you work out the fear and the jealousy and the envy and all of those energies that are just not feeding the inner spirit self because there's wounds there. But it's up to, it's up to each person to, to fulfill that and to seek out those inner child wounds and then heal them. Because you can only heal thyself. Nobody outside of you can give you those experiences. It's gotta come from you. And you have every right to live and create whatever earth timeline that you want because you're the one that is the maverick for all others in your experience. And then that epicenter of that reality universe gets to move up in this higher vibrational reality because those threads are constantly working in the infinity. So when this, 
per, they will say portion, this portion of the universe is moving up, if you will, through vibration and a certain collective amount of the collective percentage of the collective is moving up in light, moving up in light, moving up in light. That vibrational thread, thread reaches out and catches a thread of that next universe and pulls that thread in. It's a constant weaving. And that's what I'm shown, constantly shown by the heavens. It's a constant weaving of higher vibrational light. And that's why sound is so important. Sound is so important to weave these energies and these particles in. And you catch yourself on the same loop when the wounds are not being held because 4D is really the emotional realm. That's where we're healing all of the emotional energies from 3D, from the limitation, the fear, the greed, the lack, and all that we've been told about ourselves. That 4D is that realm of healing. And we can only heal through the emotional body. And that's why usually the emotional body is the first set of mental and emotional because the mental body is being so overworked and so overwhelmed by the same repetition programs of limitation, the same loop, right? It doesn't change. doesn't change. You've got to change it. And it is only through the centering of who you are, spirit, nourishing the spirit, nourishing the spirit, nourishing the spirit. That spirit amps you up to a new loop. Then you entrain yourself, you know, as the Arcturians showed me many, many years ago, it's the higher vibrational entrainment. It's up to each and every one of us to say, well, how do I want to be entrained? What do I want to train myself at? Not to look at anybody outside of you because then you're only following somebody else's program. Because when you do, you can tell I've got all my sheets. I went out and did a bunch of photocopying from all of my webinars. When you create that alignment with you and you're operating from the, the, the center of who you are as a multidimensional being and you're in alignment of your heart space, your heart space is in alignment with your, um, with your brain functioning. That's when you're connecting with your entire multidimensional systems and you then begin to activate the, the, um, the biochemical, the physical exponents in your bodies and your fields. And then you're operating and you're offering that light to everybody in your circle. When you're balanced and well and grounded and spiritually in alignment with you and you're offering that highest light of love and acceptance and unconditional care and honor, that light goes out and creates that infinite potentiation for those to also open their field and light, even if they're operating, even if they have some densities because of their own self lack. You're operating that light and it does get affected and activated in other people's light. And all of you that are in our, our beautiful, wonderful um, communities of light, you've often commented on how um, when you're leaving our, um, our classes or our meditations in our groups, that you feel um, your fields feel lighter and you feel more activated and you feel more in fluid movement with your spirit because the densities have been removed because we often, um, and then you go back home and you offer this full capacity of light to your families and you notice those changes. Um, and thank you for sharing your comments and your feedback when we all get together because um, you know who you are <laughs> um, and you're sharing of your experiences when you're opening up to your fields and you're working with your fields and you're working with your light and you're working with your bodies and how just in a few days, you'll notice when you're working with all of your spiritual team and you're honoring who you are and you're honoring everybody else for their team, even, even those experiences that are so very challenging and those programs that have been run from many other timelines like Orion and all of the timelines we've talked about before with the misuse of energy. Um, they're running programs from other timelines and other galaxies, um, but it's up to you to state your intention, you know, not to engage. It's up to you to set those boundaries vibrationally at the beginning and the end of every day and throughout your day if you're working in close quarters with those and you'll, you'll sometimes, sometimes sense them with people at work as well and the abuse of power that goes on sometimes. Um, and just staying, staying in your center and just radiating unconditional love and peace and then you will eventually um, operate out of those timelines and those stories and just intending that new direction and that new earthly life. And oftentimes, sometimes even in the, you know, the, the most... Um, you know, the most, you know, difficult cases, you just simply move, you know, move yourself and detach yourself away from it um, and completely reclaim all of your light and all of your energy so that there's no um, interference at all. Um, and the heavens will support you in that as well. Um, until those stories are learned and then there's the change of direction, you know, with those choosing to play those programs. Um, and then you just, you just navigate. And the children to know this as well is just how to navigate around challenging energies, how to navigate through in work environments, you know, where their socio systems are changing from abusive oligarchy pro programs into more fluid, honoring, respectful, fair, equitable honoring, where each and every person on this planet has the right to express themselves as a spiritual being, however that spiritual being is um, desiring itself to be expressed. Uh, um, 
you know, as long as it's not hindering and inhibiting or harming another. And if it's harming another, then there is absolutely the right use of will that is not being respected in the number one law in our universe, which is the right use of will and the free will. And so every person has the right to their path. Every person has the right to express themselves as a spiritual being and a, a monumental, expansive being of light and to continually rewrite those songs of ascension. Who are we as the micro macro and how can we radiate and emanate love? And as you do, and if that love is continually um, not being honored and disrespected, then you absolutely have the right to just disengage and move um, because you want all that you are to be honored and respected and valued. And it's not up to anybody to, you know, hinder your progress in that way for doing so, for standing up for yourself and for standing in your own light. Um, and so the 3D to 5D programs, um, it's, 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 it's working with what limitations and stories have I been using and falling into just because that's what we were taught or told is that there's just no fault in any of it. <laughs> you know, we've all come here with Akashic and lineage stories of what story was I told and what belief did I take on? You know, we give our power away so easily, but now we're running it to return to center. Who am I? What story do I want to choose for myself? And how those vibrational stories really affect us on a multidimensional level. It really, really does affect us. And if we're not taking commandmentship of who we are, we're not taking ownership of who we are, then all of those vibrational experiences affect our multidimensional co-creation and the earth reality that we co-create. So it's really, really important to get used to really discerning through your daily um, co-creative journal. You know, just journal. How can I let myself out of this vibrational story? Or how can I call people in to start co-creating in communion and really start communicating in a fair way so that my voice and my needs are met so that I'm treated with respect so that I'm ab absolutely falling in the respect of my spirit and my soul. How can I communicate that better? How can I see it from this perspective and that perspective? And how can I really use the multidimensional bodies and systems that I am in a new way so that I'm in training that higher vibrational loop? And so it really is, you get, then you get to see yourself as, wow, I really am a multidimensional person. I really am, have more to me than I thought. Again, who are you? What do you exist within and what exists within you? And how can you really be more vibrant? How can you really be more alive in all of it? And really take ownership, really take on, be proud to take ownership. Many of us have come from so many backgrounds and, 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 you know, um, timeline experiences where it was like we were to be seen and not heard and our gifts were not important and our gifts were not understood and valued and all of those vibrational stories that separate us and, and allow us to feel less than and lack and then you end up attracting those in your life that want you to feel less than and lack um, and because you co-create those stories together until you wake up and you say well no I'm meant to be special and I'm meant to shine my gifts and this is why I'm here because that's the spirited promise that we made with spirit that's the magnificent um, promise that we all make with spirit that is the number one aspect of creatorhood that spirit mother father ask of you as we do for our children it's no different we want our children to shine and be their best we want them to be their most unique we want them to be their highest vibrational path and allow yourself to really let go of anything and any experience that wants you to feel less than and, and doesn't want you to shine <laughs> you know you can allow them to work those stories out um, but you are absolutely meant to be in absolute honor and absolute love and absolute cherishness for who you are because you are precious and feel that and love it and honor it and value it and say, yeah, I walk with this. I walk with this. And just allow yourself to seek those that are also in vibrational empowerment and honor of it because you will. Just like we've had, you know, incredible experiences with our communities growing, you know, because you own that vibration and you're setting it out and they're saying, hey, let's join, let's join, let's join. And those communities join, and those communities join. And you gather steam and you gather momentum. And then you all start creating as the collective, you start creating those 5D experiential earths because you're all co-creating on the excitement of those experiences and vibrations and alignments. And you, you gather regularly, which is important to, and to create those physical earth alignments, really find those in your sacred tribe that you can connect and you can co-create with and you can communicate with about what you're going through so that those physical earths and those physical experiences can be, um, um, can be co-created, right? And then you allow your, um, yourself in that little commercial there then you can allow yourself those experiences of yeah we can do this like the collective can do it together and so we're going to pull one of our our oracles here we're so happy that you've joined us we're going to do a really quick sound activation because my, my i've been practicing with my um my voice it's been so it's been so amazing and loving and we've been doing lots of ascension songs so i'm grateful this one just flipped out
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> We're going to do probably a show tomorrow, um, a quick show on Gaia. This is Gaia. I love Gaia. Um, in many of the activations and this, the um, travels that I've done, if I've, if I've had the time and the resources to travel, um, connecting with the stories of the earth and the vibrational um, archaeology and anthropology of the sacred lands. And oftentimes the lands come and talk with me and Gaia talks with me when I'm sleeping and when I'm in my meditations and connecting with the Gaia energy that are always connected with tribal ancestral um, um, we were just we just had a connection last night um, in our meditation group for the communities of light with um, a tribal um, collective from the Andromedas that were showing us um, connections with the sacred ancestors of the indigenous and they were showing us um, the, the rock consciousness and they were doing a ceremony with the rocks and why tribes and our ancestors teach us that in story time with our tribes and our ancestors and our elders are so important to continue what stories are your elders passing down to you? How can you incorporate your elders' stories into your now experience and really give honor and homage to the ways that lives have been lived through the wisdoms and the intelligences of Guy and how we honor that and we grow through it. We have, um, when I'm shown those Akashic portals and those energies of the lineages when we're doing private sessions and global seminars and global webinars, the portals that we all co-create through, through the cohesion of who we are as the collective, the cohesion that we co-create is a vibrational experience that those that are gathering in the, in the excitement and the exploration of who we are, cohesion works in an infinite number of ways. So again, it's why the environment and the circle that you hold is so important to the calibration and the light and the health and the wellness of your bodies. Because that cohesion is a multidimensional experience. And if you're um, constantly in co-creation with um, dysfunctional, negative, um, harmful energies, that cohesion is harmful and negative. And it has an absolute effect on the multidimensional bodies. And why when you're stepping out of that experience and you clear and cleanse and you give yourself time to heal, you absolutely feel the difference in your light quotient and you feel the difference in your alignment with your mental body and all of the bodies that you are. And oftentimes why so many people that have been through such experiences um, of trauma and abuse, when they step out of those experiences, they begin healing and clearing all of that, um, all of the energetic um, you know, density that's in their field. They absolutely start thinking and, and breathing and feeling better because there was so much karmic density um, through the negative projections, through the negative energy and all of those experiences that go into those karmic games that are just, um, again, your aura is the value and the color of your light and your truth. So if you're not in truth, that's just a, a lot of density, a lot of blockages. And then it creates the, again, that cohesion that is dysfunctional. So when you're clear and when you're truthful and when you're transparent, that is clear truth and transparency. And it's a foundation that is truth, true clarity and transparency. So it really is about how you operate as light and really clearing and cleansing and getting straight with that first. Then that creates the foundations and allows you to operate in a truthful and a transparent way. And those that are empaths and crystals and intuitives um, and energy workers and energy healers, that's how we feel and why we feel what we do. And all of our collective is awakening to that and why the systems are changing. Because we're our conscious, our consciousness of the planet and the collective is growing in greater, greater ways. And that consciousness raising is allowing us to really create higher vibrational systems. And so this Gaia energy is about, the, again, the collective healing, how our collective is releasing those energies. Seeing everybody is healed when you're waking up and you're doing your early morning intentions about how you see yourself as healed, how you see the planet as healed, how you see the children as using their voices and being absolutely aligned with their highest consciousness. And you're going to be so grateful to see them interacting in these really beautiful ways and you're seeing yourself entangling and engaging with high vibrational beings and you're seeing yourself as high vibrational beings within the collective and everybody is is learning to work their way up into these absolute loving and caring experiences of who they're who they are and allowing everybody to be loved and accepted and really valuing the honor of free will really valuing the honor of an infinite number of spiritual truths because all truths are true and all truths are always and all will always lead back to spirit even in the most challenging experiences where there is, you know, harm done, there are still spirits and there's still energies of God. But to know what you're able to take yourself out of and what is harmful for you or what is not acceptable to you. And each person has their own value and their own stories of truth. And it's all true. It's all true because they're the ones that are experiencing that level of truth. And they have to work through their stories and their own self-value of what's, what's right for them and own it. And again, as we've said in all of our experiences, your truth tomorrow will be different because you're all constantly harmonizing that soul energy of who you are. You, you might be integrating a soul aspect from a, you know, a, an earth lifetime back in the 1800s. 
And that's why you create the wounds and the healings that you do in this now moment, because those wounds from the 1800 is still there from that lifetime that never got healed. You know, the value system and the self-worth and all of those experiences and why we're here to clear it for the collective. And so everything that you're going through within your own unique soul path is always, always, always connected with the collective soul's themes and healings of subjugation, fear and control, separation, because that's our planetary story. And so the Gaia Collective of our healing, again, which we said today, and we've been talking about that lately is um, in our meetings, in our um, private sessions, is the galactic recoding and the galactic preparation for first contact because we're all constantly evolving from 3 to 5D will allow us for that first um, vibrational contact to make sure that our bodies are in oscillation for the absolute um, connection with our higher vibrational celestial friends so that we're not feeling less than and lack of worthiness when we're meeting the higher vibrational beings. Just as each and every one of us on this planet are constantly moving in and out of vibrational densities and vibrational understandings as we're releasing really limited stories about who we are. Um, and so anything that's feeling limited, controlling, lack of, or you're feeling stuck on a karmic loop or a karmic cycle, then it's up to you to take ownership of that story and clear it out as often and as how often as it feels like and really honor yourself for the depths and the richness of your vibrational plan and how you can incorporate because some of them are, some of the ones are not comfortable and they're not easy. So allow yourself to reach out, create a positive community of support, reach out to various um, health and wellness healers. Allow yourself to make those contacts and support groups and say, can I depend on you when I'm going through my clearing? Do you want to go for a walk once a week? Um, you know, really reach out and use Gaia and um, call in your healing teams and really honor the value that your higher self is guiding you to. Your higher self will always guide you to make the, um, to make the corrections through now moment choices of honoring your soul story and honoring your wellness as spirit, therefore honoring all others. Because it's always that same respect. If you're not honoring yourself, how would you honor another? And that, again, leads you to the preparation of meeting your true soulmate. Because if you're honoring and valuing yourself, then you would be able to honor and value another. If you're not valuing and honoring yourself, your multidimensional bodies, your fields, and the right use of will is not being honored, then you cannot be in vibrational match to a true soulmate. Those would be the karmic experiences that continue those those painful stories of showing each other, you know, those parts of ourselves that just need wounding and healing, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're just stories that just go back and forth and blame. And so stand in your power, own your truth, create a new story, heal the wounds, and then you release less and less on any medicines and things like that. Um, it was funny, we were talking last night in our community of light, I had a, um, I used to, when I was younger and growing up, I used to be on inhalers, you know, I used to get bronchitis and, you know, all of these, these experiences because of, um, you know, the smoke and the, the densities at that level. Um, um, but since I was in my awakening, I haven't had inhalers. And so that just shows you when you're in alignment with light, you really clear out a lot of those woundings that you have those, um, you know, those energies of you know, suppressing your voice and so on, because it's all energetic. Any illness begins at an energetic level first. And so you can really work with that and start loving your body and honoring yourself at a multidimensional level and honor everybody else. They're doing the best that they can. And above all and be all honor who you are, how, what, what and how you need for your highest health and start calling in what with your teams, what it is exactly that you need to be nourished, to be honored, start asking your teams for, you know, maybe you need a, a vibrational move so that you're with um, grids and portals on the planet. Those of us that are grid workers, really start calling in sacred tribe that will work with you on a higher vibrational level that will honor your light and help you embellish and really enhance your gifts. And a lot of people that I've been talking to the last six months have been really opening up and being really open and letting go of outcome, really being open to where spirit and God wants to place you because there's so much happening within the collective ascension plan that things will be moving around and people will want to co-create in different ways with different people that will enhance and value and um, amplify their gifts. And allow also too, when we're doing this, we're allowing the children to also see that and do that as well. We want to absolutely emulate and be the equal participant and we want to be the example that we offer our children the highest potentiation of who they can be and really release themselves from systems of limitation that, that they have been stuck and steeped within because of limiting belief systems, that they're able to explore who they are in, in any vibrational manner as a spiritual experience 
um, expressing their voices and their gifts and their wisdoms as the highest potentiation of who they are as light, that their bodies can um, call in that greater light and work with spirit and really start healing their own wounds that, um, you know, a lot of the misguided and misdirected, um, you know, diagnoses these days are just the misunderstanding of their multidimensional bodies and how they are operating in a higher vibrational knowing and DNA capability that just is not known in the traditional world of medicine but there's absolutely people that are opening up to various ways of creating for high vibrational kids and using different systems and different potentialities which we had last night somebody um you know coming in to offer a new vibrational school and so that's really great see these people are just coming you know to me that are in you know really um operating in those ways where they're stepping completely out of the traditional experience and they're creating their own systems whether it's education or healing um, you know, it's funny because everybody that's, you know, come to our, our communities of light, they're all creating these unique experiences of ways of creating their unique excitement in the community, but doing it outside of, you know, where we have been. That's what we're meant to be doing. So I'm so happy to be a part of that anchoring. So the Gaia card is all about understanding transitions that our planet is going through and has been going through uh, planetary ascension for years and why we're waking up to why, who we are, what we exist in and what exists in us and why we want to feel better vibrational stories. So when you're feeling like you're being stuck in a story, create that new entrainment, create that new vibrational story, create that new truth of who you are with spirit. You are an absolute infinite potential. Go within, start nourishing spirit, start aligning that spirit. And understanding that you are connected with the all that is. You're connected in your biochemistry is the elements, the air and the water, and all that is spirit, that all that is the earth. And that is why that sacred trinity is so important for the alchemy and for the transition and for the transcension of who you are. Absolutely set up your own unique story about who you are, the value of who you are, the importance of who you are. Start working with your gifts. Start working with your higher self. Start working with your guides and know that you're absolutely in every way excited to be who you are, valued to be who you are. And in doing so, you are the joy of spirit. You are the joy of the pearl of the 5D and you absolutely can create whatever abundance health and wellness that you so choose because that is spirit. You're living in alignment of spirit. You are in love with spirit and you are absolutely amplifying your highest light and um, allows us again, Guy is one of the highest um, potentials and portals of our high vibrational healing because we will be learning so much and I've been offered so much um, potential for how we offer and we honor healings for our bodies through Gaia using Gaia in different ways and really honoring Gaia in different ways and magnifying ourselves in that way. And so we're really happy. So we wanted to do a really quick, um, because this is the full moon energy, we want to do a really quick um, activation because it's gone on for far too long. <laughs> this video, we wanted it to be short, um, but we got so excited with our print offs here. Um, I spent some time getting these printed off. Um, so thank you for everybody that has been donating um, to our, our programs of light yay <laughs> and for those of you that want to join us every thursday night at 6 45 for the communities of light um, you're free to join us um, there is a donation all of our donation tabs are below and my email is down below for those of you that so desire want to connect with us um, again we have um, all of our co-creative programs um, um, have been channeled and been working on them for 10 or 15 years um, and um, I don't have a boss. <laughs> it's just been me and whatever monies that I make, I send, you know, to my illustrator. Um, and um, I used to have a website girl, but um, I don't have a website girl anymore um, just because of the resources and the time and the effort that it takes. Um, so um, all of our experiences and all of our um, offerings have been through the channeled work through me, through the councils of light. And we are very much appreciative and valued um, for all of those that connect with us for private sessions, for global webinars, and for all of our incredible work that we're doing together in anchoring these beautiful communities of light, of pure excitement, of pure excitement. Um, and we have not given any permission for any use of our work. Um, and nobody's approached me for um, collaboration or for contribution. And so just so that you know, um, and those of you that have any questions about that, please feel free to email me. My email is down below. Um, and spirit will always guide me on um, the um, energies to work with and um, those energies to look out for. So I'm constant in guidance and all of my energy and all of my direction is through the guidance of spirit and why I'm given those downloads for the direction of spirit and how to operate and understand the multidimensional potentiations just for our own joy and excitement. 
because it's my joy and excitement to bring these um, illustrations and visions to you. And then I'm given those stories and how it operates at the micro macro level. So we can all begin to have more fun because that's what it's all about. We're meant to have fun. We're meant to allow everyone their unique path. We're meant to allow everyone their unique creative and beautiful expression because we are meant to be sovereign. We are meant to be absolutely aligned with our highest and our best and our hearts are meant to beat with joy and beauty as we want our children to feel. Isn't that what we want our children to feel? their own unique excitement with joy and vibrational alignment and, and acceptance, pure self-acceptance and who we are. So we're so happy for that. And we're so happy to connect and I'm, I'm open to um, beautiful co-creations of sacred soul tribe and communities of light. Um, if you'd like to connect with our communities of light, again, it's Thursday nights. Our mastery classes is every two weeks on every second Saturday. We have personal and private sessions and creative healing sessions and activations. Um, we create sacred sound and healing activations. Um, and all of our um, sacred healing um, connections include um, light language, sacred sound for the alignment of the multidimensional bodies, clearing out any blocks, and you always come with your vibrational teams, your galactic teams, your celestial teams, and anything that the spirit guides want to bring through for you. And again, preparation for 5D Earth and, and first contact, and of course, every other thing that Ascension is all about. And then our last card, oh my gosh, <laughs> simplicity. Isn't that right? Um, and again, as you're releasing those stories that um, have kept us so um, limited in the vibrational stories and that are really of our own choosing. So we, there's, there, again, there is no blame and there is no judgment on any of it. Every story helps us in our oneness of God. Every story helps us in our oneness of who we are. Every story helps us to go within and to seek, um, why did I attract that? Why did I, why did I call that in? And do I have the strength to move forward? Do I have the strength in this? And what else do I, can I practice? And what else can I be to achieve this, this, and this? So all of it is an alignment process. And every day working on that, that 5D earth and that 5D body and that version of you that you're wanting to anticipate to see yourself in and feel yourself in. So feel into the vibration of your 5D experience. Feel yourself into the vibration of what that 5D earth looks like, how the air is clean, how the water is clean, how the water is fresh, how others are healing, how others are coming to you in that beautiful vibration of the goddesshood that you are. You are all beautiful children of spirit. So never underestimate that. Your power and your connection with spirit is your most valued and treasured story. So write about it. You are meant to truly honor the value of who you are as spirit. You're meant to embellish and really nourish that seed of light. So really be the beautiful experience of who you are and really bring that story to life. You are meant to be in the vibrational story of who you are as spirit. And so honor it, value it. How does that feel like? And what does that feel like? And how can you practice new beginnings every day and really rewrite your story in a profound way? The 5D entrainment is really, really important. Not just to talk about it, but to practice and be in 5D. And those of you that have been practicing have been coming to me and sharing with me how your life has been altered. So I'm really, I'm, I'm really, I'm really grateful for your sharing and for our co-creations because it allows me to stretch up and reach out too, because your portal of cohesion allows me to reach up for higher versions of cohesion as well. And so let's all just open our hearts to our chakras. Thank you. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, spirit. And just ground, just feeling into the blessedness of your body. Give yourself permission to shine. Give yourself permission to clear and cleanse. See and feel your pillar of light running up your spine, running up your spine, running up your spine, and ground to Gaia, ground to Gaia, ground to Gaia. Give yourself permission to feel all that you are as an epicenter of light. Feel the your councils and your teams and the beautiful angels of healing, your higher self and your soul. Activate your field by being bathed in light. And through breath, your intention, thank you, breath, thank you, breath, and intend yourself to reach higher for light, reach higher for light, and your cells are now open. Just doing a few moves of infinity breaths and sweeps like this, you can feel your cells already activate light. I activate light, I activate light, I activate light. Thank you, spirit. I am spirit, I'm guided by spirit, I am spirit, I'm guided by spirit, my body is spirit, my body is spirit, my body is spirit, and I get to choose my story. Thank you, spirit. And we're gonna activate in this beautiful full moon that we align with and we begin practicing with the intention, the visualization and the motivation and the energy vibration of all that we are as higher vibrational beings, however that feels, whether it's beautiful stories of love and beautiful stories of light and beautiful stories of excitement and beautiful stories of song and dance, however you choose to creatively express yourself, is that version of you that you want to start imagining, to start dreaming, to start feeling into and really feel alive and vibrant with who you are and be okay. So some of you may think that, wow, I really need to get over that confidence because I feel so insecure about being that vibrant. I mean, 
tell me about it, <laughs> been through it. Um, but that's where you want to build that self-confidence. And that becomes with truly, truly practicing every day that self-love. I love myself. I'm so blessed. I have so many gifts. I'm so grateful I have these gifts. And do it in a way that you're surrendering ego and you can really feel into the love of who you are and the value of who you are because your teams and spirit and God all creation feels that way about you. Really honor your gifts. You're meant to be in joy of your gifts. So we're gonna intend and activate those creative experiences, those creative synchronicities, those creative stories. So once you go to bed tonight, you can start feeling into what is my creational story? What does my 5D earth look like? And how can I begin in training those experiences? How can I really release and take positive action, positive action, positive action into creating a beautiful vortex, vortex of momentum? How do I wanna feel in this vibrational body? And start visualizing, what does my 5D body look like? Oh, it's got great light and my skin is rich and beautiful and my bones are rich and beautiful and I'm calling in that light and I'm feeling light and I'm speaking of light and my spirit is light and I'm connecting with every being and every living aspect of spirit because that spirit is spirit and spirit is light. Light begets light and life begets light. And call it in momentum, momentum of light, momentum of light. And transmute anything in your field. I'm transmuting anything that needs to be released. And I'm calling in this light. I'm creating a vortex of me in this five-dimensional body. My body feels great and healthy. I am aligned. My bodies and my fields are aligned because I call in light and I choose to align my chakras. And I'm asking the angels to help me align my chakras. I'm just open. I'm opening my chakras. I'm opening my chakras and I'm calling in light and breathe. And ground. Feel yourself grounding and just visualize or imagine your feet being soaked in the soils of Gaia. Just feel your body going in with Gaia. Call in the light, call in the light and organize all of your consciousness. Just call in through intention, through intention, through intention. I'm calling in all of my consciousness to my divine sacred heart. I love my heart. My heart is so profound. My heart is a mechanism of love and potential. Crown start activating. <laughs> Thank you, spirit. See, when you open up your chakras and your bodies, you just get in tune with your body. Your body will show you what's being activated and cleansed and cleared, ready for those activations. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> Thank you, spirit. <clears throat> And so just do full body breaths, continue with full body breaths, full body breaths. You're very beautiful and you're a beautiful child of spirit. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> and we're calling in the highest angels of the holy light. Thank you and holy programs of light. Thank you, spirit. And all of our angels and celestial guides, please bathe any discordances and densities within the fields with the highest light vibrations of love and sacredness. And just intend what vibration do you want to feel? And you'll feel you're releasing. You'll feel the little gas and the little bubbles come up for release, come up for release, come up for release, clear your crown. Clear, 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 clear. Bathe yourself with light. Call in light. My body is healthy. My fields are healthy. I'm bathing myself with rainbow light, rainbow crystalline light. I see myself as crystalline. I see myself as vibrant. I see myself as excited. I see myself as joyful to be me. And yes, I do get to shine and I'm not going to apologize for it. So give yourself intention to feel yourself new, to feel yourself vibrant, to feel yourself loved, to feel yourself in oneness with everyone on earth. Feel your heart chakra threading love and oneness, 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 love and oneness with everything and every aspect of light on earth. We're creating light just through the intention of the cohesion of our group. The cohesion of our group is love and light, love and light. You're calling up the energy from your root, from your sacral, from your solar plexus, and you're combining it and you're anchoring it in with your heart, calling it in, calling it in, calling it in. You want your safety, your manifestation, your creativity, your I am presence, your I am presence, your I am presence. Just connect all of your chakras through imagining, through breath work, through intention. <laughs> Intention of love. Oh, I, uh, 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 I,
There are special meshes that would like to come through from the Galactic Federation as those of you who are thinking about the vibration and feeling into the vibration and calling in the vibration that you so choose to create for your bodies, for your cells, and releasing any densities and illness within your bodies as you're thinking about the alignment of balance and love and centeredness of who you are. Feel the centeredness, feel the centeredness and ground. I am centered and I am whole and I am safe and I am sacred and I am sacred and I am balanced and I am whole and I am centered within my being. I am centered and ground. Feel what it feels like to be confident and loving and self-guided. I am so profound, I am so profound. I am sacred and I am centered in my body. I am centered in my field. I am centered in my light. I know who I am. Call in your light. You are a goddess, you are a goddess, you are a goddess, you are a god. You are the master of your own bodies and you're the master of your own fields and you get to direct your 5D creation. You get to direct your 5D creation and from that state of, of course, why not anything else but love and joy and excitement and sacredness and curiosity and adventure for that's how we want to manifest. Doesn't that sound really good? To manifest from that place of joy and sacredness and intention and invention who we are to reinvent ourselves every morning, to reinvent ourselves every night, to call in that light to create. Yes, I will create greater health. Of course I can, of course I will, and of course I am. Greater health. Every day, every day, every day, greater health. And affirm to yourself throughout your day, I am greater health. I am greater health, I am greater health, I am that I am that I am that I am. And play and be sacred of life and who you are as love. And be the director of your own life. Thank you, Spirit. Is there any energies? Thank you, Spirit. I'm so grateful. Is there any energies that would like to come forward? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Galactic Federation. Thank you. We are activating your heart chakras for the oneness of who we are with you. We connect with you at your hearts and we love you so. So nice for us to connect and entangle with you in these heartfelt observations of how you may co-create with one another and acceptance of one another and all of your paths and all of your stories that you weave in and out to be accepting and forgiving of all. To seek in compassion and understanding of all paths, not to judge, simply to accept for they allow you to deepen into your oneness of who you are. For as we travel, we investigate and we discover, we call in all experiences, even that which is so different from what we have ever experienced before, for we are excited to know that all is source. So fear not, dear lighted ones, for when you are ready to explore and to call in a new aspect of you, you will want to discover and explore new vibrations and new ways and new beginnings, new offerings of practice so that you can discern and ponder and accept all as spirit without the fear or the worry. And that is what you are all learning, how to navigate vibration without the fear or the worry or giving your power away, but to stand clearly within who you are Feel what is right for you to accept all that is source. It's all source. Fear not, you're all one. And standing in your power allows you to release the stories, release the fear, the subjugation of any one having control over any other, for it's all an illusion. And you know this. Why you feel so good when you get to play and simply investigate and explore. What are vibrations like today? Who may I call in today to see as an aspect of source? And I release all fear and worry and judgment for it's all source. I wanted the most expansive exploration of all that is source. For why wouldn't I? I stand in firm in who I am. I will not be thwarted by any navigational energy that I do not feel comfortable in. And I get to be okay with that, but I get to accept it all as source as well. And this is how you get to play quite confidently, dear ones. And working through those fear stories, 
or they are held in other timelines through which you did give your power away and harm and destruction was done. But you know now to just align in your heart space and expect all as the experience of spirit in the navigational path through your healing journeys as one. For each and every one of you are the reflection of oneness within thy stories of knowing thine self. As we explore, we offer all that is different, for it allows us to see the interception that is spirit, allowing us to see a new perspective and allow us to feel and honor and create that oneness of our experiential discoveries. For we absolutely are excited to meet all that is different. And how may you offer in all that is different, offer in all that is, and stand within your power to just ponder and wonder and accept as source. You still allow yourself to choose your vibrational path and understand all is one. You allow that opening to the divine connection and allowing all the highest potentials to be a part of the all co-creation without separation. And we understand that many of you have coming from stories that have hurt, stories that have wounded, but you can cast aside all the wounding. And you can still call vibrational forgiveness so that you all may bring peace to your stories, to know that you are still brothers and sisters, to allow each to stand in their power, to allow each to walk in truth. For all truths are true and all are the beautiful divine co-creatorhood that is spirit. See all as love, seek all as love. For in this love exploration, dear ones, you will be so excited to call in what is new, for you've had the confidence and the clarity, the self-knowing, of course, <laughs> as you discover who you are every day, you fear not. Dear lighted ones, how may I meet new vibrations today? I understand I'm a multidimensional being. I can see, sense, feel, and know all things, and I know how to navigate confidence and joy and excitement then you take the fear out of the stories that held you so trapped it's all just your vibrational stories to remind you of your oneness nothing has power over you it never did you are free and you are liberated dear lighted ones how may you have fun how may you enjoy that you are the conception of who you are as a miracle you are a miracle you are a miracle you are a miracle your health your wellness your well-being you are within this universe to the exceptions of all that you are accept who you are as this miraculous experience and shine forward radiate who you are as love and just be love simply be love Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Galactic Federation. Thank you. And Ewiki Tiki Anunaka. Thank you. Thank you, all of the angels. I'm the key. And she, she, and we need to keep at it. Thank you. Thank you. So I love you. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit for all of the beautiful galaxies that are with us at all times. Um, so yeah, when you have that intention and that perspective, just to see everything as a, as a vibrational exploration, it really takes all the fear and the worry and all of those games that are played. And it takes all that power control out of the picture and it doesn't um, have any power or control over you and it has no hold if you will or any worry or vibration so you can just clear those energies from your field and just see everything as a beautiful vibrational um navigation and story so we thank you dear lighted ones um, um anybody that would like to donate to our our ascension offerings we would love that the links are below our classes our webinars our private sessions our private intuitive sessions healing sound healing anything that you would like to co-create in this beautiful and glorious experience of who we are as fifth dimensional beings calling in our oneness and calling in our galactic oneness for all of our creational experiences here on planet earth we love you so much we love you so much um namaste dear lighter ones we love you